Now, we've been talking about all types of things, and it may seem sometimes that we never talk about trust, but that's because you may not understand the skills needed and how all of it relates. So we're gonna get a little more explicit in this video and talk about exactly what skills a trustee needs. Now, if you're not gonna be the trustee and you're just a grantor, it's still important to understand these skills because you still have to hire someone who knows what they're doing. In general, it is very hard to find all of these skills in one person. So the standard practice is to have at least two trustees because to find it all in one person is gonna be kinda of hard to do. But also that depends on the complexity of your trust and blah, 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 we're not gonna get into all that. Right now we're gonna focus on the skills that a trustee needs to run a trust. After we go through this list of skills, you'll understand why a trust, or what I'm specifically talking about is a common law trust, is not for everybody by a long shot. So you have a lot of groups that always talk about start up a trust and do this. I can guarantee you 90% of those people have never started up a trust because just the sheer way they talk about things online shows that they have no idea what they're talking about. So let's get into these skills. First skill off the top, you got to know accounting and or bookkeeping. This is vital. Numbers tell a story and the way to tell those stories are through basic financial documents. These financial documents being profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and there's something else in there. We're going to get into details about all these skills as we continue. But regardless if you're a trustee or not, you've got to understand financial documents and how basic accounting works. Without this, you won't be able to track the numbers, see if your trust is making money or losing money. That's, then it gets into if you need to dissolve the trust. If you can't see these things, you're going to get blindsided by a financial catastrophe that was clear to anyone who took the time to learn how to read financial documents. So accounting is an absolute must for anyone who is serious about being a trustee or hiring a trustee who knows what they're doing. Next skill on our list, understanding the legal system. Now, when I say understand the legal system, I mean the way it is generally taught to everyone. Now, we have some skills and some knowledge that may give us other ways of looking at the legal system, but in the end, we must at least understand how basically it works first before we start trying to apply any ideologies to it. But next, we gotta understand that these ideologies may not mix well with operating a trust. So either you yourself, if you're going to be a trustee or as the grantor, needs to understand that you've got to have a trustee that understands to separate these two ideas because some of them do not mix well. And if you start using these ideologies, it may put your trust in jeopardy. So people running around on forums saying start trust and then, oh, if you start a trust, you can also do this, you can also do that. Question them immediately. Do you have a common law trust? And just because people have paperwork doesn't mean they have a trust. Everyone gets caught up in this paperwork stuff and all oh, I gotta have this paperwork. No, you gotta understand the legal way things work. Because if the IRS comes knocking or if the FBI comes knocking or whatever, whoever comes knocking at the door, legally you must know how to handle yourself because you must protect your beneficiaries almost at all costs. It's of the utmost important to keep them private. That's why it's a private trust. So if you just turn around and start handing off documents because you're scared, that's, you, you don't, you're not cut out to be a trustee, bottom line. Understand how the legal system works, how it actually works on the, public, on the public side, and separate these ideas that you have about how things work and how things work in the background and, and powers that be and all that stuff. These two things probably do not mix well unless you are very, very well versed at each of them. So learn the legal system the way it's supposed to be, the way it's taught to everybody and leave everything else alone. Now, another skill on this list, it may not be completely necessary, but if you're doing a family trust and you plan to grow this thing for generations, one skill that you definitely want to look for in a trustee is mentorship ability. Because the beneficiaries are going to be your future generations coming up, the trustee is the one who's gonna pass along this trust. So they're gonna 
the history of your family is going to be into this trust. Now, I talk about setting up trust for people for those particular reasons of bringing your family together or bringing a group of people together who have common goals who want to sustain this for generations. If you're just bringing the trust together for asset protection and that's it, then obviously you don't need a mentor, but you may not need a common law trust either. So have a trustee if that's your purpose beyond just sheer asset protection and you want to put your family and bring them together and solve issues, your trustee should be a good mentor. Next on our list, language skills. Now, language skills are vitally important. If we talk, we've talked about linguistics and all the stuff in that video, so you can go check that video out again. But language skills you gotta have, because you gotta communicate with the other people in the trust, whether it's a board of trustees or the beneficiaries or the grantor, and you gotta just be able to communicate properly. So language skills are of the utmost important for everyday life in general. So the better your language skills, the less chances of things being misunderstood, being taken the wrong way, whatever it may be. Just make sure that you and or your trustee, or if you're a trustee and or your grantor, have language skills so you can communicate properly. Because a good communicator takes responsibility to make sure that both parties understand what's going on. Writing skills. Now, the records of a trust must be written. This is how everything's gonna be passed along. While you should have an executive secretary that does everything, if there's not there, the writing in your trust must be on point. So whether you gotta pick up some business writing books or just go online and brush up on your writing skills, writing is very, very important. We're talking more than just grammar and spelling. With most of the programs out here, that will happen for you. Still, you got to know how to write properly. Get out there, start up your own blog to do something to practice your writing skills, but make sure your writing skills are on point because everything in a trust really comes down to the record. And if your record is not clear, you're going to have problems. And this is what will cause disputes and it'll just be a chain effect of things happening until your trust kind of just goes out of control. So make sure that you have good writing skills or your trustee has good writing skills. The next skill that I'm surprised a lot of people are not as good at as you would think, even with the advent of computers being everywhere, is computer literacy. This is super important because everything is going digital. So if you came from another trust or something like that and it was like 100 years old and they didn't have computers back then, then your trust is probably running okay. But as technology keeps advancing and things happen, people are going to start digitizing everything. Make sure that you are computer literate. If you have good typing speeds, you're not pecking at keyboards, even though you have other people that need to work on these things, a lot of your work will be done on the computer. If you're not fully confident with your computer skills, go take a class at a community college or go buy some discourse that you can get to make sure you are computer literate and you understand the ins and outs and the basics of how all computer programs work. So it's just a small learning curve, but you're not really learning how to use a computer at the same time you're trying to learn how to use a new program. Go get the skills that is an absolute must have, regardless of what position you're in. Now a very subtle but vital skill that everyone should have as a trustee, as a grantor in your personal life, at least if you're listening to us, is the willingness to continue to educate yourself. Things are always changing, there's always more knowledge, and there's always a little something more to learn. And every time you learn something new, it starts changing the way you do things or the way you might start setting something up or whatever, it's going to help you. You want someone who is going to continue to learn and you're not telling them as a requirement, this is what they do on their own. So if that's not you, you probably won't do too well as a trustee. And if you're looking to hire someone, make sure that is something that they continually do on their own. Because as long as I've been training myself and improving with my skills, there is still more to learn. And I'm still continually improving myself. So you guys should be doing the same if you're serious about starting up a common law trust or having one or maintaining one or whatever you're going to do with it, whether you or your trustee, I'm going to just assume you're the grantor, or the trustee, 
that is a vital skill, but it's very subtle and it's something that goes overlooked because it's not something you'll see on a resume. I continually educate myself. So look for that in all your trustees. Business experience. Now, this is something, a trust and a business that ultimately ran the same way. So everyone's talking about, I wanna start up a trust and let's do this, but they've never ran their own business. Their whole life, they've been an employee. So how do you expect to really run a trust when you don't have business skills? Now, a trust is not something you just start up like a business because this is, everyone is at stake now. And this is why it's so vital for your trustee to know what they're doing or have these experiences. They don't have to have been a trustee before, but they got to have business experience because you cannot run a trust as an employee. You don't have the skills and the know-how to understand how all the parts work together. You know, if you've been an employee your whole life, it's probably why you have never even looked at a financial form before, unless you're someone else is doing it for you and interpreting it for you, or you're not worried about certain things. You got you got to, got to, got to have business skills. And we ain't talking about I started a business last month either. I'm talking about at least three years because three is the, usually the magic number you're going to see. One year, you don't have anything to compare to. Two years, you have the first year to compare to, but you're still adjusting from year one. By year three, you start to figure it out. So three years is going to be the magic number. So three years of business experience. You know, whether it's a good business or bad business, it may not be super relevant, but they have the experience. Because if we have two trustees, you know, you guys balance that off each other. But either way, business experience is a must in a trustee. Now, something that may be overlooked or not thought of by a lot of people who talk about starting up a trust is being familiar with investing. Now, a trust must have cash flow. A trust is not a bank. You don't just park something in it and let it sit there because the trustee gets paid off of the trust. Now, if the trust isn't doing good, then they kind of revert to some type of hourly wage. But the trustee pretty much gets paid off commission of the trust. So the trustee must have cash flow. So if you don't have business skills or investment skills, you, your trust is already doomed from the beginning. These things are important. You, may, you don't have to be a master at them, but you got to be familiar with them and know to navigate your way around different investment vehicles. So make sure... As a trustee, they understand investment because a trust without cash flow is doomed. Now, one thing a trustee really cannot be is a nine to fiver. You can't, it takes a lot to run a trust. Like I said, it's a business. A trust is not something you're going to moonlight unless it's a very low key asset held trust and that's it, there's nothing involved. But we talk about a more complicated trust, that trustee's job is pretty much full time as a trustee. So if he has a nine to five, and especially if it's the type of job that he has to bring work home or he's thinking about it all the time, it's not, the, that's not the person you want for a trustee. It's better to go off and hire some independent trustee until the person you want to be a trustee can fulfill the role as trustee and then you kind of start cycling people out. So if the person works a nine to five job, which means they've probably been an employee their whole life anyway, they probably don't have the skills to be a trustee. So trustees are not nine to five type people. 